Right now, the governor calls for a special session to address abortion access, but the Republican-controlled legislature already opposing it. Plus, new information this evening. Charges now filed in connection with yesterday's deadly crash that killed a bicyclist on Mineral Point Road. And inside a local classroom, students raising money for kids their own age in Uvalde, Texas. That's all ahead right now at 6. question is, shall the assembly stand adjourned to the Senate Joint Resolution 1? Next. All in favor, by saying nay. Aye. 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 All opposed, by saying no. Next. The ayes have it. The assembly stands adjourned to the Senate Joint Resolution 1. The April 2020 special session will stand adjourned until Monday, April 6th. The April 2020 special session is adjourned. And that was it. The entirety of the past two special sessions called by Governor Tony Evers. One in May of 2021 and one in April of 2020. Republicans gaveling in and out within seconds. Regardless, the governor today calling for yet another special session. This one to take up legislation to repeal Wisconsin's 1849 abortion ban. That law, more than 170 years old, would become law if Roe v. Wade is thrown out by the Supreme Court. Now, I know this is going to be a tough fight. I know that because for three state years I've had a ringside seat to the attacks on reproductive health care, and I have vetoed every one of them. But like the others recently, this upcoming special session may be short-lived, too short to even debate any bills. Political reporter Will Keneally has more on what to expect. And that's right, we're not expecting to see much June 22nd when, in theory, the legislature is supposed to meet on that issue of abortion. With both chambers controlled by Republicans, the Senate Majority Leader has already come out and said that he will gavel out the session Evers called for. But legislative Democrats want the debate. Abortions will still remain. People will have to go across the state to access health care. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, that doesn't change the need for abortions, just the access to it, says Madison Rep. Francesca Hong, which is why the governor called for a special session to do away with Wisconsin's pre-Civil War ban on abortions. Um, this is the type of proactive action we need to take to ensure the safety of all pregnant people um, and make sure that their freedom and their freedom to access reproductive health care um, is available. But Republicans have already thrown cold water on the idea. Senate Majority Leader Devin Lemahue said he would ignore the session, saying, quote, killing innocent babies is not health care. We will gavel out of another blatantly political special session call from this partisan governor. To, to not even come into session to debate it um, for a party that shoots themselves as a party of freedom and small government, this is taking away freedoms of those uh, who need access to health care, and it's really putting government and politicians where they don't belong, the doctor's office. This is not new for the legislature to gavel out a special session without debating a bill. Of the almost dozen special sessions that the governor has called for, only one has yielded a result. A special session last February produced one bill to help fix the state's unemployment insurance system. Almost all the others ended without debate. So we've not heard yet whether Assembly Speaker Robin Voss plans to debate the state's abortion law, but he will likely follow the course of his Senate colleagues. Thank you, Will. Voss is appointing a former Republican member of the Wisconsin Elections Commission to fill the vacant spot on the commission. Lawyer Don Millis of Sun Prairie will fill the spot left vacant with the resignation of Commissioner Dean Knudsen last month. Knudsen abruptly resigned in May, saying he could not continue to represent Republicans who attacked him for stating that there was no widespread election fraud in Wisconsin in 2020 and that President Trump's loss to President Biden in the state was legitimate. Next, six the weather story a bit of a roller coaster ride so far this week from sunny and warm to chilly and rainy let's check your certified most accurate forecast now with chief meteorologist gary canalti gary well the skies are starting to clear across southern wisconsin or at least most of us are seeing uh, sunshine the areas east of madison still have some cloud cover but you can see on visible cloud track that definite clearing trend from west to east and as we take a look at doppler track Really, uh, most of the shower activity is over toward Milwaukee and out into Lake Michigan and moving away. There might be a sprinkler or two in a spot or, or so uh, over the next hour, but after that, uh, look for mainly clear skies overnight. Low temperatures this morning, mid-50s. Here in Madison, 56. Most areas saw temperatures in the middle 50s thanks to the cloud cover. High temperatures today, right now in Madison, uh, that is the current temperature of 58 degrees. But you can see out to the west, temperatures are in the upper 60s and lower 70s, and they actually were even warmer because they had sunshine earlier this afternoon.
Look for skies to become mostly clear overnight. Low temperature dropping to about 52. Tomorrow should be a sunny and mild day with a high temperature of 76. Some showers back in the forecast for Friday, off and on through the weekend into early parts of next week. But a big warm up after that. I'll have more in the forecast in just a few minutes. Next at 6, a Sun Prairie woman has been charged in connection with a crash that killed a bicyclist early Tuesday morning on Madison's west side. Authorities arrested 42-year-old Okima Jones shortly after the crash on a charge of homicide by intoxicated use of a vehicle. Jones is also being held in the Dane County Jail on a tentative charge of hit and run causing death, which has not officially been filed yet. Authorities still have not yet identified the victim, but they say he was a man in his early 30s, according to an incident report. The crash happened shortly before 4 a.m. at the intersection of Mineral Point and South High Point Roads. Tomorrow morning, a vigil will be held near the site of the crash beginning at 730. Madison Bikes, a local advocacy group, says a ghost bike honoring the man will be installed at the scene. Organizers say the crash is a sign that the city needs to improve road safety. And developing tonight, the Madison Police Department has been awarded a $50,000 traffic enforcement grant focusing on pedestrian pedestrian and bicyclist safety. The department has been awarded the grant for several years in a row and says it will continue to prioritize the safety of our most vulnerable roadway users. Starting next week and continuing throughout the summer, MPD will be deploying enhanced enforcement efforts throughout the isthmus. In the early morning hours, the Madison Common Council voted to approve a massive redesign of the Metro Transit System. The adopted plan included 17 amendments greenlit by the city's Transportation Policy and Planning Board on Monday. The system now moves to the next step of implementation of federally required equity analysis with a targeted implementation date of June of 2023. Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway called it a great day for people who use the service, writing, quote, the Metro network redesign solves decades-old problems with our former network and expressly and intentionally improved service for low-income communities and communities of color. Madison police are searching for a man who they say stole a grill from a West Side business last month. Here's surveillance photo. It happened on May 10th on Excelsior Drive. Camera footage reportedly shows a man dragging a Weber Genesis grill from the back patio of the business. Police are asking the public for help in identifying this person. Anyone with information on the incident is asked to give them a call. Around the state, a major drug bust today in La Crosse. Police there say they seized more than 100 pounds of drugs as well as five guns and thousands of dollars. A 26-year-old man has been arrested in connection after multiple search warrants. Police estimate the street value of drugs they seized to be more than one million dollars. I left my daughter at that school and that decision will haunt me for the rest of my life. Heart-wrenching testimony on Capitol Hill from the parents of Lexi Rubio, one of the 19 children, along with two teachers who were shot and killed at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. Legislators today also heard from Mia Sarrio, who survived the massacre by smearing her friend's blood on herself and playing dead. Do you feel safe at school? Why not? Because I don't want it to happen again. And you think it's going to happen again? This testimony today is House Democrats are preparing to move forward on a wide-ranging package of gun measures, but the House is expected to vote along party lines, making the legislation unlikely to get through the evenly divided U.S. Senate. At the same time, Senate negotiators say they are getting, quote, very close to a framework on a smaller gun bill package. Locally, fourth graders from Middleton have come together and raised more than $3,000 to donate to Robb Elementary School in Uvalde. Students put together baskets to raffle off and wrote letters to send to the staff and students there. It all started the morning after the shooting in Uvalde when students wanted to know how they could support the school thousands of miles away. And still ahead at six, a closer look at the mental side of summer break, especially for the youngest children. Plus, thousands of pounds of food, a truckload donated today from a local family-owned farm. We'll have that story when we come back. Hey, this one's free. Car in front of you, pay for it. The best things in life are free. It's the greatest day of my life. <laughs> Just wait till she hears about free installation from Feldco. Reinstallation on windows, siding, doors, and roofing. Plus, no interest until 2024. That's something to get excited about. Reinstallation ends soon. Call now. Low quality windows, siding, and doors. Call 866 for Felt Co. Before treating your chronic migraine, 15 or more headache days a month, each lasting four hours or more, you're not the only one with questions about Botox. 
Botox prevents headaches in adults with chronic migraine before they even start, with about 10 minutes of treatment once every three months. So ask your doctor if Botox is right for you, and if a sample is available. Effects of Botox may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away, as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue, and headache. Don't receive Botox if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. In a survey, 92% of current users said they wish they talked to their doctor and started Botox sooner. Plus, right now, you may pay $0 for Botox. Learn how AbbVie could help you save on Botox. When President Trump called for a southern border wall, I didn't just agree. I built him a prototype. Tim Michaels, endorsed by President Trump. Now, instead of building the wall, Joe Biden's rolling out the red carpet for illegal immigrants. Totally, completely, utterly incompetent. Conservative Tim Michaels, endorsed by President Trump. For illegals, no driver's license, no benefits, no tuition. There's nothing racist about enforcing our laws. And when I'm governor, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. A special gift from a local family-owned farm today, Jones Dairy Farm, a seventh-generation family business based in Fort Atkinson, donating a semi-trailer full of food to Second Harvest Food Bank of Southern Wisconsin. In total, 19 pallets of food weighing more than 35,000 pounds were dropped off this morning. It is essential that we stock food pantries in Wisconsin because people are struggling. We know that families are are short on food and if we can help in any way we're going to do it. The donated food includes brown rice, frozen carrots, garbanzo beans, quinoa, sunflower seeds and black beans. Second Harvest Food Bank of Southern Wisconsin works with local food banks in 16 southwestern Wisconsin counties. Well, this is the first week off from school for many kids around the state. And while having no school, of course, is something a lot of students have been looking forward to for months now, all that free time might not be as great as they thought. Hannah Borchard spoke with an expert at the Behavioral Health Clinic in Wausau about how that initial excitement often wears off quickly. 75% of these kids' school days have been structured by the minute. When kids walk down the halls and leave their school on the last day, they're also leaving behind structure. And many find the free time in summer isn't all that. When the novelty wears off, they can feel listless. They can feel like, I don't know what I'm going to be doing. They can feel isolated. She says the socialization and structure are especially important for younger kids. You're going to see this more often so with younger kids than older kids. And the reason I say that is because younger kids, they're really used to that structure and that immediate gratification that comes from, oh, I'm doing this thing and oh, I'm doing the next thing. Getting your kids involved in summer programming is one way you can help them with their mental health. About 200 kids are a part of the Boys and Girls Club Wausau area in the summer. We do have a ton of kids that come in the summer to fulfill their time, providing that structure for them, um, a sense of belonging, and that socialization. Luke Johnson is part of their youth development staff, and he helps create programming. My favorite part of working with the kids is definitely getting to build relationships with them and them and see them grow. Mentors are there to support when teachers and counselors are off the clock for the summer. Throughout each day, the staff here will incorporate any sort of social, emotional learning type of programming into what they are doing every day with the kids. She says the Boys and Girls Club provides kids with the socialization and sense of belonging they need while away from school. That was Hannah Borchert reporting. If you're noticing your child having a hard time adjusting to summer, the Behavioral Health Clinic says it is completely normal, especially for the first month off. And they recommend adding some structure with a sleep schedule, steady meal times, and age-appropriate chores. So to come tonight, why Packers minicamp isn't just for the players. We'll hear from some fans driving hours this week to see their team. Plus, more off and on rain chances throughout the rest of the week. Gary Canalti will rejoin us with his complete forecast when we come back. What you see is important. How you see is important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Right now, get 30% off lenses with the purchase of any frames. Shopco Optical.
Fjords has been crafting beautifully designed functional furniture since 1941. Every aspect of Fjords furniture has been carefully engineered to create a higher level of relaxation. Right now at the Century House, purchase any Fjords furniture and receive up to 20% off. All models, all sizes, all colors. Experience the unmatched relaxation you can only achieve in Fjords furniture. Relaxation made beautiful. Visit the Century House at 3420 University Avenue in Madison or online at centuryhouseinc.com. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Donate today. I'm with Paul Delahunt, president of Renewal by Anderson. So, Paul, how do you know your Fibrex window is going to hold up over time? Well, Dean is the full-service replacement division of Anderson. Longevity is in our DNA. But last year, we conducted a long-term durability study. After two decades, our windows were as easy to open and close as the day they were installed. If you're looking for a replacement window solution that's going to last, look no further than Renewal by Anderson. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation and take advantage of this limited-time offer. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. It's Thursday's Daily Deals at Hy-Vee. Intamin's Little Bites, only $1.99. Hy-Vee Ice Cream, only $1.99. A dozen chocolate chip or monster cookies fresh from the bakery, only $2.99. And buy one, get one free on Nori Sushi Rolls, Thursday only. For more ways to save on hundreds of items every day at Hy-Vee, check out our monthly catalog, our weekly ad, and scan the QR code to visit hyveedeals.com for even more deals. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important, too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Shopco Optical welcomes more insurance plans than ever. Call to book an exam and verify coverage. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. And welcome back. Today is World Ocean Day. It is estimated that the Earth's oceans provide at least 50% of the planet's oxygen and is the main source of protein for billions of people. But we are taking more from the seas that can be replenished. Its ecosystem is being impacted and damaged by things like overfishing and pollution. Yesterday, the Green Bay Packers kicked off their three-day mini camp. And unlike last year, it appears the quarterback drama is over with Aaron Rodgers in attendance. But this camp isn't just about the players. It's also about the fans. Paul Stino was at practice taking the temperature of Packer Nation. He's back. I was happy to see him here. Uh, happy to start the season. Happy to go forward with him. Hey, what was it like to uh, see Aaron Rodgers? It was really cool. Wells traveling with his family and his friend Levi to be here. Excited to see Rodgers, not only because it's good for the Packers, but as a quarterback himself for his local team. He's trying to learn a few things from the MVP QB. Like how to drop back. If you want to get an idea of how excited these fans are to be here, even if it's just a practice, ask some of them how far they travel to get here. Kyle Peters traveled over four hours from the Chicago suburb, arriving hours before the practice started to make sure he got a seat. And even me and her taking off work just to come up here just to watch him, but it kind of shows the dedication that you have to the team. Now for the million dollar way too early question. How do you think the Packers are going to do this year? I think that's also a question that has some mixed emotions to it, especially with uh, Adams leaving. I think we'll be okay, though. Really good. Probably a Super Bowl contender. Tuesday, a practice at Ray Nitschke Field. But before you know it, the green and gold will be back playing real games at Lambeau. Go, Pat, go! And that was Paul Stina reporting from Green Bay. The Packers also opened today's practice to fans. Well, June 8th, also an important day, a tragic day, actually, in southern Wisconsin when it comes to our weather history. Here's Gary with more. Yeah, 38 years ago today, this is what Barneveld looked like when the sun came up. It was a tragic night. Tornado struck Barneveld, F5 tornado. Uh, in the middle of the night, unfortunately, it was devastating. Uh, there were nine people who died, almost 200 injured. Uh, in a town at that time, the population was about 600. About 90% of the town was destroyed. It was part of a, of a big tornado outbreak from Iowa 
Iowa into Wisconsin and parts of Minnesota. 46 tornadoes uh, over eight states there and $25 million in damage at that time, but it pretty much destroyed about 90% of the town. And it wasn't the only tornado that occurred across southern Wisconsin that night. You can see F1 through F3 tornadoes uh, basically starting in the southwestern part of the state and then moving north of Madison into DeForest, Arlington, Marquezan, then eventually toward Columbus and Beaver Dam. Uh, all of these tornadoes, uh, you can see the, the long path links. This is very unusual uh, in this part of the, the, the uh, at least this part of the country when it comes to tornadoes, but it was a pretty big outbreak by uh, tornado standards. Last night and this morning we had rain and a few thunderstorms, of course, no, no severe weather, but a pretty gentle, uh, healthy rain, about one to two inches through the northern parts of our viewing area. And then from Madison South, we're generally about a quarter to you know, almost an inch of rain in spots. You can see a couple sprinkles still up around uh, Saw County, but other than that, the main rain has moved off to the east. The shower threat should be ending pretty quickly, and skies are actually clearing out very nicely. Um, you see to the west, there's not much in the way of rain. So three things you need to know in the forecast. We're back to sunny skies for tomorrow. That will bring high temperatures back in the middle 60s. Then we'll see some shower chances on Friday. Saturday, maybe a little better chance in the afternoon and evening. Sunday, a slight chance. And Monday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms. About a 30 to 50% chance. And certainly not an all-day rain any of those days. And then next week, the rain chances go down. The temperatures go up. Highs will be in the mid to upper 80s. Right now, temperatures are in the 50s and 60s where the cloud cover is. But outside of that, temperatures are very comfortable, mainly in the mid to upper 70s. Dew point temperatures are pretty nice, too. They're actually pretty low across Minnesota where it'll be a cool night. But to the south and east, that's where all the humidity is. There have been some intense thunderstorms down toward uh, the uh, Cincinnati area, that area under a tornado watch. But you can see to the west, a large area of sunshine that will move in for tomorrow before the next weather system already starting to spread some showers into uh, Montana and northwestern portions of Wyoming will be moving eastward. Uh, right now, high pressure is located across the Dakotas. That's going to clear out the skies. You can see the last of the showers starting to die out. Temperatures 50s near Lake Michigan, but almost to 80 by the time you get out toward the Twin Cities. So some very nice weather out to the west for tomorrow. And we'll just continue this back and forth thing every day. Tomorrow's the update, 76 with mostly sunny skies on future track. You can see clear skies overnight, low temperatures, lower 50s. Tomorrow, lots of sunshine, high temperatures in the middle 70s. Then tomorrow night, a few more clouds, maybe a shower late at night, low temperatures in the mid 50s, and some showers or even a couple of thunderstorms on Friday with high temperatures in the lower 70s. Rainfall amounts, spotty. Uh, you can see some areas about a tenth to maybe as much as a half inch. Other areas may miss out on the rain altogether, but notice those temperatures. Upper 70s to around 80 through Monday. Then again, those rain chances go down. The temperatures go up. Highs mid to upper 80s for much of next week starting on Tuesday. And coming up in sports, the United States versus Canada. It doesn't get any bigger than that in women's hockey. Why the U.S. can't wait for tomorrow's game. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Wells Asphalt Paving. Expert paving for over 40 years. Now offering $250 off your asphalt paving project. For residential and commercial. From new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. When my family opened the first Culver's in Sauk City, Wisconsin, you know what we did? We gave it our all, making sure everyone felt welcome, sharing our favorite foods from around the state, like butter burgers and fresh frozen custard, greeting every guest with all our heart, crafting each meal with care, leaving a smile makes everything taste better. And it's a tradition we bring with us yet today, from our hometown to yours. Welcome to Delicious. Most senators couldn't tell you the cost of a gallon of milk. Thanks, Ruben. Or how much beef is going up this year. But I'm not like most senators or any of the other millionaires running for Senate. My mom was a teacher and my dad worked third shift. I know how hard you work. And I know that by bringing manufacturing home, we create jobs and we lower costs. If we want to change Washington, we got to change the people we send there. I'm Mandela Barnes and I approve this message. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of industry-leading Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us, with expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. 
Take advantage of exceptional financing offers from your local Cub Cadet dealer today. To find the dealer near you, visit CubCadetDealers.com. There are too many burgers out there, so Arby's doesn't make burgers. But there aren't enough Wagyu burgers, so Arby's made an exception. Get wrecked, bad burgers. Arby's, we have the meat. Wells Asphalt Paving, expert paving for over 40 years. Now offering $250 off your asphalt paving project for residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. As the school year ends, kids have a lot more time to spend outdoors. Tomorrow, our Time for Kids expert explains why that's good medicine for growing brains and bodies. And sunshine returns for at least a day, but does it stick around? That's tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. The MFAM Championship Week is one of the best weeks of the year for Steve Stricker. He gets to be back in his home state, golf in front of friends and family, but more importantly, it's another opportunity for him to give back. Now, don't get me wrong, Strick wants to win this weekend. It's his sixth major, but the amount of money this tournament raises for charity and being able to help his community, well, that's the real win for the Edgerton native. It's been a uh, very rewarding thing that we that we do on a yearly basis and we get to look forward to this each and every year and to see the the faces of the charities when we give the money in December and the the children's hospital is very special to all of us so um, yeah very very rewarding way bigger than any win that I've ever had on tour so this is a special week for all of us Friday morning, Stricker will tee off at 10.50 on hole one with Jim Furyk and Davis Love III. Jerry Kelly will be right behind his buddy's trio. The two-time defending champ will hit the course at 11 o'clock. Two games into the U18 Women's World Championship, two blowout wins for Team USA. But Thursday, the competition should ramp up a notch or two with a day down the ice with Canada. Last week, the two played an exhibition game, and it was a good experience for the United States. They put on the American sweater for the first time. They won the game and got a taste of the best rivalry in women's hockey. So they already know what to expect for tomorrow night. It's going to be a battle. Um, it's going to be a huge battle. Uh, anytime um, you're obviously playing in this tournament, but when you play each other, um, you know. So we're looking, we're looking forward to that. Obviously, they're our biggest rival, and it's like really special to be a part of that. It's like there's no other tension like the one like when you step on the ice with Canada. And I think that scrimmage we had last Thursday has really helped us. And Jake Ferguson is officially a Dallas Cowboy. The former Badger tight end put pen to paper and signed a four-year deal with the franchise today. Ferguson caught 46 passes for 450 yards and three touchdowns last season at Wisconsin. I wonder how many times they're going to bring up who is grandpa? Yeah. I mean, well, he's a pretty good football <laughs> player, man. It's great to see a local kid, too, yeah. from Memorial uh, moving on to great things. Gary, final check of the forecast. Well, the last of the showers are pretty much moving out into Lake Michigan. There might be a sprinkle or two in a few spots, but uh, they're just about all over with. Temperatures right now range from 60 in Madison to the mid-70s out toward the Mississippi River and mid-50s toward Milwaukee. Look for a low tonight of 52, high tomorrow 76. Some rain chances through the weekend and then warm for much of next week. All right, Gary, thanks. Thanks for joining us at 6. We'll see you back here at 10.